I am Jessica Hooten Wilson and I am a lover of books and I wanted to share with you a book that I have read at the start of this new year. This is The Supper of the Lamb, a culinary reflection by Robert Farah Capone. This book was recommended to me by the Forma Journal, which runs out of the Searcy Institute. And there's a review that I, of course, will share uh, regarding this book and why it is that I was drawn to it. The book to me is a contemplation of the small things. It's posing as a cookbook, but you can imagine more that it was written by G.K. Chesterton, the way that the book delights in the beauty of the small. There's an entire chapter dedicated to the contemplation of an onion, of its dry husk, of its wetness and moisture within it. Uh, Capone advises that we sit before the onion, that we relish its placiness, that we relish its unique individuality. He wants us to take the time to look at something and give it the attention that it deserves. And it is with that mindset that he approaches one great meal as he walks through it slowly, step by step. And he invites you into this relishing of things as things are, not for their use, not for how they contribute, because they are precious, because they are made, and because they are real. And thus he's trying to overturn all of our absorption with consumerism, with what he calls our solemn idolatry of spiritualizing things, of making them matter only to us, but not because they are matter in and of themselves. And instead he gets you to delight in the beauty of the things themselves. The very end of the book is a reflection on the purpose of this meditation. And he draws our attention to Christ, God, who became matter, who was in the flesh, and thus redeems our fleshiness and redeems the things of this flesh of this world. He writes, the world would be lifted as it was always meant to be lifted by the priestly love of man. What Christ has done is to take our broken priesthood into his and make it strong again. We can, you see, take it with us. It will be precisely because we love Jerusalem enough to bear it in our bones that its texture will ascend when we rise. It will be because our eyes have relished the earth that the colors of its countries will compel our hearts forever. The bread and the pastry, the cheeses, the wine and the songs go into the supper of the lamb because we do. It is our love that brings the city home. So you see his small reflection on things like breads and cheeses and wine, which by the way, if during the new year you are giving up, <laughs> bread, cheese, and wine, or you're trying to cut back, this is not the book you want to read. Uh, Capone is not a um, promoter of diets. In fact, he goes against them. He says, if you're going to do anything, then you should fast the way the Bible recommends and then feast. And the fasting is to enjoy the feast, but you should not abstain from the beautiful things that are given us uh, to take delight in. And that that would be the opposite of a Christian practice for enjoying the things that are around us, that we should not treat food as its nutritional content or just as calories, but enjoy the bread, enjoy the cheese, enjoy the wine, or fast from them when you need to so that you can come back and enjoy them properly. Food in that sense becomes the sacrament of unnecessary goodness. It's a reminder for us that the world will always be, as Capone writes, more delicious than it is useful. I hope as you start the new year, if you're looking for a book to read, that you choose this one.